My dear, thank you very much. Yeah. So you get to you get to start us off. Thank you. Uh, I'm Lynn Bowers, and my group is Forest Land Dwellers. We deal with issues of people living near uh, industrial spray, industrial lands, uh, timberlands. Um, it took us eight years of hard work to get to the point where we are talking to you tonight. I can assure you that the Triangle Lake uh, Highway 36 corridor is not the only community ex experiencing these kinds of problems. What would you, my question is, what would you suggest these other communities do to get your attention? Thank you. That's a very fair question. And then the, the, uh, the corollary to that question, which I, we've asked ourselves, is um, why, are we, why are we doing this and why are we not, why are we not everywhere else? Um, the fact of the matter is that there are only so many resources to go around. Um, we operate in a world of data, and uh, data help us understand and me measure what we are trying to understand. Um, the, and I'm not suggesting that those other communities go out and, and ask for their own testing, but uh, I would say that we recognize that there are other communities who have similar concerns. Um, we are sp focusing our attention here um, on this community and, and there's no guarantee that the results from this community will be broadly applicable to other communities. But we recognize that the concerns here are about um, some specific spray practices that may be happening in, in other communities. So we'll be um, trying to make sure that other communities understand what we're doing to the extent that we can. We'll have a web page going. Um, if, if folks outside this community are interested in hearing what we're doing and, um, and how that may apply to them, then we'll communicate with them that way. It's probably not likely that we're going to be doing something like this in multiple communities at this point. Uh, you know, I can't say for sure we won't. I can't say for sure we will. But this is, uh, re this is requiring a significant amount of resources uh, that we still haven't secured. So, okay, I have um, <clears throat> a question about your terminology uh, levels of concern. And my husband and I were at another community, Yahats, and they were having a discussion about pesticides that are sprayed on the roadside, and that community is uh, very concerned about that. And the DEQ was there that evening, and they were talking about the, how they go about looking at the, the level that they actually spray. And they were saying that, well, it, it's, it sounded like it was safe to all of us in the audience because they were saying it's not toxic, and we do additional, we apply additional measures of safety to make sure that these are not toxic. And someone asked from the audience, can you define the word toxic? What does that mean? And the woman hesitated and then told us toxic means death within three days. Oh. Now, if you are assuring us this isn't toxic with that sort of meaning, um, that is really scary. And so I'm saying, what is your meaning of levels of concern? Okay. <laughs> Very fair question. Yeah, that would certainly be toxic, <laughs> right? Um, so remember, I said earlier that we're we're concerned about chronic exposures and acute exposures. What that person was talking about, I wasn't there. I don't know really what the context was, but they would be describing an acute exposure, a really high level of exposure where you'd see something really bad happen very quickly. Um, so when it comes to uh, chronic levels of exposures, those levels are much lower, right? So we have ways of um, understanding what that toxicity is based on animal studies, um, epidemiologic studies of humans, and some, some case studies. Um, so in, let's, talk, let's not talk about urine just right yet because it's a little hard to convert those concentrations in urine to a, a specific health effect. But we do have concentrations uh, or, or reference doses or reference concentrations for water and food. So um, for water, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly, I'm going to start looking at my risk assessor uh, colleagues over here because I'll quickly get out of my depth. Um, in water, we use um, uh, what's called an MCL, or maximum contaminant level. 
uh, for drinking water. And uh, where we don't have MCLs, some, some uh, uh, pesticides we have MCLs for, um, some we don't. And where we don't have MCLs based on that, we have uh, what are called benchmarks. So this is where I'm going to turn over to Greg and Dave and see, do you want to, do you want to chime in here about the benchmarks? Yeah, so in water, the EPA, in addition to MCLs, um, so the MCL is a legally enforceable standard that is, is applicable to public drinking water systems. So in other words, a public drinking water system can be fined or penalized for having water with that contaminant above that concentration. So, um, so Lexi said there are a lot of pesticides that don't have an MCL, but the EPA does have um, uh, lifetime health advisory numbers um, that we use um, instead. And actually, those are oftentimes set um, actually more more stringently, but uh, more protectively even than the MCL. So um, when a chemical does not have an MCL, we'll, uh, we'll probably use those. Um, for food, um, there's, um, uh, along with the study, we'll be asking people a lot of questions, survey questions about what they eat from their garden, what they what they eat from the animals and plants that they that they grow, and uh, so we'll know how much they eat of those things. So once we know the concentration of a of a chemical in that, you know, vegetable or milk, whatever, and we know how much they drink. We can calculate a dose and compare that to the reference dose. So uh, the reference dose is is set based on animal studies, sometimes human studies, where. Um, we feel, feel pretty confident that exposure below that reference dose um, will not cause harm. So that's why I would answer this. Craig, do you want to? I, I can't anything on the, add anything to the human health uh, part. Uh, the only thing I would say is DEQ looks at two kinds of toxicity when they're evaluating chemicals in the, in the environment. One is the human health risk associated with that chemical, and the other is the aquatic life risk associated with it. So with a lot of pesticides, particularly uh, um, insecticides, Aquatic life is, uh, numbers are often a lot lower in terms of their sensitivity than the human health numbers are. Hi. My name is Kimberly Wild, and I live in a manufactured home park called the Meadow on Pitney Pond in Junction City. And we have an issue where we have gotten some new property managers. In the past year, they are just saturating the community with Roundup. I mean, every square inch of it. And we have a wetlands pond that he has sprayed and saturated. And uh, when I try to talk to him about it, he just says, that's too bad, tough luck. You know, if you don't like it, that's too bad. And he's actually sprayed the children's playground. And so five minutes after he sprays this stuff, these little kids are out there rolling around in the grass and playing with their toys, and I have called every organization there is, and nobody will help me. It's perfectly legal. They said he can spray it. He doesn't have to tell you he's going to spray it. He can do it as much as he wants, whenever he wants. And how can that be where, and it's right up to my house. I mean, it's a beautiful field that there's no weeds in. It's manicured, but he doesn't want to mow anymore. And I am just really upset about it and wonder why nobody can help me. Okay, I'm going to actually uh, call upon my colleague from the Department of Agriculture to talk about um, how uh, how pesticides are regulated, an um, applicator versus a, a private homeowner. Yeah, Kimberly, in, in your particular situation, have you contacted the Department of Agriculture? Do you I, I, I no, I don't. But, I mean, but certainly, uh, you know, as far as meeting with the property owner, going over, evaluating the materials that he's using, how he's using the materials. You know, certainly, I think we can play a role there. In he just not, says it's harmless. They say it's harmless. It's gone in an hour. But is, is, that, is that the property, yeah, the property, the property manager? property manager. Brian Hogue and I think our staff would be happy to meet with them yeah. and at least discuss your yeah. concerns he and evaluate the use practice. He said it's so harmless that it's safe to drink. He said, I don't know anything about it, but from what I've heard, it's safe to drink. Mm. You know, it's so harmless you can drink it. You know? I'd be happy to follow up with okay. you. Okay, thank you. I'd be grateful. Thanks, Kevin.